So a few weeks ago, I put up a devlog on the channel of me basically recreating Conway's game of life using Unity's data oriented technology stack and their entity component system. Now, I had a ton of fun making that video and I was doing some pretty interesting things um, with different concepts of Unity ECS, one of them being blob assets. Now, I didn't really talk about this too much in the video, um, but some of the people who kind of dove into the source code of my project noticed what I was doing with blob assets. Um, and I just kind of wanted to share it with you all um, and just kind of go a little bit deeper into that topic. And I kind of want to use this video as a way to go into some more advanced topics when it comes to blob asset stores. Now, I did a video a few weeks previous from that where I basically show the basics of what blob assets are and how to use them in Unity's entity component system. If you haven't watched that and you're not really familiar with blob assets already, I would highly recommend that you watch that to kind of get Get yourself up to speed but just to give a quick recap blob assets are basically a way that we can store immutable data in our game that is data that's not going to be changing throughout the lifetime of our application or as long as we really have a reference to that data now in the game of life project what i'm doing is i'm actually using a two-dimensional blob asset store for all the entities in the game now the kind of cool thing is that the data on those entities can change um, even if the entities themselves are you know just still the entities themselves and again this is a two-dimensional blob asset because i basically wanted a way to reference you know any arbitrary entity on my entire grid just by using its xy coordinates so i ended up using like a, a 2d blob asset which unfortunately got kind of messy when i was writing out the code for it you see what i mean when i get to that portion of the video but I did find a way that I could clean it up really nicely. And I think the solution that I came up with is quite clever um, and it looks really clean in code. So anyways, before we get into it, I'd just like to say, if you do find today's video helpful and you enjoyed it, I would really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about Unity's entity component system and their data oriented technology stack. Of course, if you do have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave those down in the comments section below or join us over on Discord over at tmg.dev slash Discord. So anyways, I think the most logical place to start is just kind of at the source of it. So this is basically the you know raw data that's going to be stored in these blob assets. Uh, remember, these blob assets can just be like regular structs. They don't need to implement I component data or anything like that. In this case, I've just called these the cell entities. And then so I actually have a reference to both the data entity as well as the render entity. And in the video where I recreated the game of life, I kind of talk about why I have two entities, one for data and one for rendering. Um, but just know that I am going to need reference to both of these at different points in the application. And each of these entities is basically going to have an X, Y coordinate associated with the you know specific cell that we're um, trying to create here. So now we're going one level deeper. We're actually going to start creating our two dimensional um, array here. So I've created this public struct. I've called it cell entities Y, which basically the value on that is of type blob array with type cell entities. So again, this cell entity is just this raw data struct here. And then I've just called this value Y. So basically these are, you know, all the cells on the Y axis. And then you'll see that I also have a public struct for cell entities X. And this time around, it's a blob array of cell entities Y called X. So this is basically the horizontal array of all these vertical arrays. So, you know, with this, we've basically created our two dimensional array structure here. All right, and then, so this is the blob asset reference. So this is of course, implementing I component data, meaning this is the data component that's actually going to be associated with our data entities in our game. So basically every cell is going to have one of these references and then that allows it to reference, you know, other cells around it. So you see, I've just called it cell entities reference. Now this is a public blob asset reference of type cell entities X. We basically just need that one side of the um, two dimensional array. And then inside the cell entities X, we can access the cell entities Y, which inside that we can actually access the actual values that we're looking for. And so if that sounds like a lot of steps, well, you would be correct. It is a lot of steps and I'll show you, um, you know, how ugly this code looks just as is here. So you'll see that I'm in this, you know, process life system where it basically goes through the uh, cells around it, checks to see if they're alive or dead, and then makes a determination if that cell should be alive or dead. So you see that we're basically just getting read only access to this cell entities reference here. And so in this case, we're going to be looking around at all the neighbors, we can just create this var neighbor. So then we'll set this equal to our cell entities reference dot value dot value again, dot x. And then now here we can use an indexer. So we go into here. 
and then we'll type in our neighbor position dot x and then after the indexer we'll do a dot y at index of neighbor position dot y dot data entity so that's how that's how long it takes to actually access our data entity here um, you'll see that we do again cell entities dot reference dot value dot value dot x at position neighbor position dot x dot y at neighbor position dot y dot data entity so that's really just a lot of unnecessary code and even when i was like typing this out the first time i'm like you know i like this solution of the blob assets just pointing to entities and all that but typing that out, that is uh, disgusting. So luckily I had a random shower thought one time about what if I could make my own custom indexers? And it turns out that that is a thing. We can actually make our own custom indexers in the C-sharp language. And so you can actually use these, you know, really on any class or struct that you want. You'll see that, you know, to do this, you basically do a public read only. Cell entities, we're returning a type of cell entities, which is just that base struct type here. And and then here's the syntax for it. We basically say this, and then inside brackets, we say int x, int y. So this is how, you know, if we want to do a custom indexer for the x comma y position, we would do that. And then using the little arrow here, we can just return value dot value dot x, passing in the x, you'll see that this is the same x that we're passing into our custom indexer dot y at position y. And this is that, you know, y that we're passing into the custom indexer. So this basically, you know, goes couple levels deeper for us already and even further if you want to clean it up you can make a second custom indexer which i've done down here again we're doing the same kind of syntax to start and then inside here i'm passing an int2 index so if we do end up with like an int2 value we can just pass in the int2 value directly we don't have to break it up into individual x and y components so you'll see then this basically does the same thing it's just doing a value dot value dot x at index dot x dot y at index dot y so to show you what that looks like we just have our our neighbor entity well, again we'll take our cell entities reference and then here we can just throw in our custom indexer for the neighbor position and then go ahead and just get the data entity off of that so that is super clean much cleaner than writing you know all those like you know dozens of steps it feels like you know again just cell entities reference passing in the neighbor position here doing a dot data entity easy peasy and then if you want to see what it looks like when you're passing in x and y values so for this example i'm inside nested for loops here so i have the x and y variables separated out already so in this case it makes a little bit more sense to just do our cell entities reference passing in those x and y values just like that and so yeah those are kind of some of the advanced blob asset topics that i was using in my uh, conway's game of life recreation which i've called the turbos game of life and remember you know just to kind of recap these are pointing to entities which means that you know the data that's on these components that are associated with these entities are changing throughout the duration of the application but because the entities themselves aren't you know, being destroyed or created or anything like that, you know, they're just always basically the same, you know, we can still reference these through these blob assets, you know, just because the blob assets are immutable doesn't mean that, you know, the data that these entities are referencing has to be immutable as well. And then again, just setting up a 2D array here and then using these custom indexers right here for some clean code action. So anyways, I'm, you know, super happy with this. And if I ever do need to implement any type of um, you know, more complex blob assets. I'll definitely be doing some kind of setup like this. And also I'd really like to hear from you. Let me know if you're doing anything particularly interesting with blob assets in your own project, or if you have any ideas of things that you might want to see me try out or something like that. Definitely let me know down in the comment section below or over on our discord. Again, that's tmg.dev slash discord. Uh, once again, if you did enjoy today's video, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also, feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about Unity's entity component system and their data-oriented technology stack. Anyways, I think that's going to do it for this video. Hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one.